Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode. We've gained access to the administrative dashboard and through the appearance editor, we've edited the template file and we were able to run arbitrary commands on the server. And today it's all about doing more enumeration, post exploitation and elevate our privileges. Let's get started. So because we can run arbitrary commands, let's just uh, do some enumeration and see what we have under the home directory. So we have user called Marlin Spike that has a lots of things. Seems that these files are Windows like files. We have a MySQL history here. We have the WordPress. We have a backup for Pro FTPD. Oh, we have backdoored Pro FTPD. That's weird. Does it mean that it was hacked? That the server was hacked by someone else? We have the .ssh, which we can use to upload our own key and hopefully authenticate. Yeah, because we've used the recursive option in ls, um, we, we had a lot of output right here. Yeah, so under WordPress, we have all the files for WordPress. Um, these are, I suspect, the same files that are used under var temp or var ww html. So let's remove the recursive option just to see if there are how many users do we have under the home directory. And it seems that we have just one. Okay, let's actually see what we have under .ssh. Because we are running as www data, uh, we don't have the rights to do anything for under that folder. Even listing the directory wouldn't work. What a bummer. So what I can do is just uh, get a reverse shell. I'm going to use ngrok to expose port 8888 to the internet. And I'm going to listen on that port locally. And I'm going to use that new host name and port to generate my reverse shell. And this is what we're going to run right here. Um, we need to encode this character right here. You will encode it so that the, it is evaluated correctly. And now we should have, yes, our reverse shell. Perfect. So what I can do real quick is just elevate it to an interactive shell just to get more comfortable. Uh, do we have Python installed? Yes, we do. So we're going to use that. Oh, I forgot to say, hey, import it, please. And then continue with the rest. Oh, I think I need my coffee. I need to use spawn here instead of import. And yes, now to do things a little bit better, I'm just going to background this with control Z. And then I'm going to use STTY raw minus echo and foreground my process. And that way I get a better shell, I hope. So export term uh, X term. And now we have more comfortable shell. All right, uh, with that said, I'm just going to go to do some enumeration right here. So we have something under, if we go to secrets, generally we have all the configuration in WordPress uh, wp.config file, which is right here. So we need, we can find the db password, which is right here and the db user, which is root. So if we use mysql dash u root dash b, and then we paste in, this is why I've escalated to interactive shell to have all the comfort we need. And yes, we have a prompt as mysql as a root user. So let's uh, show uh, databases. So we don't really have something interesting here. We have the WP my blog database and we have MySQL. Rec we recognize these default ones. So I don't think there is something there is anything interesting here. 
So I'm just going to quit. Now let's do some enumeration for the FTP service we've uh, found earlier. First of all, I'm just going to list the uh, processes and verify if uh, indeed FTP is running. Let's use grep. Yeah, so we have pro FTPD here. Running is nobody. Okay, now where is this FTP running? From where? If we go to now, which FTP? Now that's the client. Um, generally, the configuration is under etc, but I don't see FTP. So let's go to the home directory of Marlin Spike and this backdoored pro FTP TD is promising. I wonder what it is. Do we have anything under downloads? Yeah, pro FTPD backdoor has been downloaded. Let's Google that and see what is this backdoor pro FTPD. All right, so it seems that we land on an exploit on Rapid7. This module exploits a malicious backdoor that was added to the pro FTPD download archive. Oh, this backdoor was present in this exact version that we have. All right, it's a, a Metasploit module, but I'm sure that we can find an equivalent that doesn't use Metasploit. The backdoor introduced by the attackers allows unauthenticated users to remote root access to systems which run the malicious modified version of ProFTPD daemon. Well, that's look very promising. So what we can do is telnet to the IP address and then just run simply these commands. Okay, let's do that. So I can use telnet, I guess, directly from here. Yeah, I need to specify the port 21. And so now I just need to type help ac id b i t c h e z and then type id semicolon and yes it's working we are running as root that's that's hilarious so that's why it's a, always a good idea to check the hash of the files that you want to download from the internet because if you don't and the file is backdoored then you're pretty much screwed like the guys who've downloaded the backdoored version back in 2010 they were screwed if we ls the content of root we indeed have access as root now let's uh, look for that in the difference between the original code and the backdoored version. And as you can see here, we have a line saying, if there is this string, then we run the command sh as suid. So let's gain the same reverse shell as we did before. So first of all, I'm going to telnet into the server. Then I'm going to run this back door and then I'm going to run my reverse shell and I just need to catch it on my local machine on port 888 hit enter and yes we have indeed access as root now if we ls etc ssh Yes, we have SSH deconfig. So let's see what is the content of that file. I'm just interested in uh, authorized files or authorized keys location. So etc SSH and then this file right here. And as you can see, it's commented out. So it's using the default value, I guess. So if we grep root in etc pass wd, you can see that indeed the home folder for slash root is for root is slash root. Um, we already created the folder slash root dot ssh and then 
we need just to make sure that we have the correct content for authorized keys and yeah it says no such file or directory man so what I can do right here is just grab my public key which is right here and put it in that file now let's rerun the same command as before and just make sure that we have the correct value and so now if I just exit that shell and try to SSH directly as root yes we land as root using SSH that's cool I hope you've enjoyed this challenge feel free to give this video a thumbs up make sure to check the other episodes of the same challenge and I'll see you in the next one as always stay curious keep learning and go find some bugs